Welcome to Kabbalah Revealed. I'm Tony Kozenek. Last time, we spoke about the force of development, the progression of desires, the way in which reality moves us uh, along a path of development. We spoke about the quality that is the definition of the upper worlds, the spiritual worlds the quality that is the definition of the physical world and what it is about the way that we perceive that makes the spiritual worlds the greater reality hidden from us. We looked at the progression of desires. We saw that there were four categories of desires that are considered physical and that because of the thought of creation, which is to create a creature and to bring that creature to unbounded delight, it must progress by means of what the creature finds delightful. And so all expression of development from the thought of creation is expressed through a lack and a filling. And we saw that desires progressed from simple desires, animal desires for sex, for shelter, food, family. And when that was filled, we moved on to uh, a greater desire, which is a desire for wealth, which is an accumulation of the first one. And when that feels empty to us because we are still feeling something driving us, something that's pushing us ahead, something that's pulling us forward. We feel, and we feel that thing as a kind of a taste, as something that uh, we must have, and we move towards it. And once we have it, we can't taste it anymore, but this is the force of development moving us on. And from wealth, we move on to fame, power. Once we feel that, we're moved on by our emptiness into knowledge. And then once we find knowledge empty, we find ourselves in a confusing situation in which nothing from this world can satisfy us. And if you recall, it's at that point at which a completely new level of development becomes accessible to us. So, when that special desire enters the heart from the spiritual, which is qualities of the will to bestow, it changes everything within the human heart. And the human heart, when you hear the term heart in Kabbalah, it means the sum total of all desires that a person has. This heart is still filled with desires that come from the physical world. These are still the, the things from categories one, two, three, and four. This desire, which is a desire to reach the spiritual, is called Israel. From two Hebrew words, yashar meaning straight, and el meaning God. A desire for a direct connection with God. These corporal desires are called nations, the nations of the world. In other words, the desires of the physical world. Up until this point, the force of development, the way in which desire moved us until we came to a point where we actually needed to feel what was above the physical world, happened in an unconscious way. But from now on, it has to happen in a conscious way because this point in the heart is a spiritual gene. It's like the embryo of the soul. And the soul is a kind of a desire. And it must be filled, the heart must be filled with this desire it must fill everything despite these other corporal desires. In other words, all of the desires that we have have to undergo a transformation, a correction. And it's by correcting these desires that the desire to go directly to God can be fulfilled. Now, why is that? In our original state, at the root of our soul, we were connected to the Creator 
as the creator and the creature. In fact, these are the only two things that exist in creation, the creator and the creature. And here we were adhered to the creator as one being, as one unified creature. But because of the thought of creation, which is to create a creature and fill it with delight, that was only the starting point. It was the beginning of a system. And this quality of the creature, which is the, the will to receive, started to expand purposely. And as a result of the expansion of this quality, of this desire to receive for myself alone, a greater diversity in quality started to grow between the quality of the creator, which is bestowal, and the quality of the creature, which is reception. And as this egoistic intention expanded, the first creature, the whole creature, the collective soul called Adam Harishon, meaning the first man, descended through a system of worlds, through 125 steps, to greater and greater egoism until the soul reached a point in which it became separated into what appears to be physicality. That is, the collective soul was shattered into 600,000 parts, each one of these parts having a piece of the original, each one of these parts a desire. Now, because this is a process, and this is only the halfway point, this broken, shattered aspect of the collective soul in which we experience isolation, separation from each other, a kind of antagonism towards each other, a desire to exploit each other, and an experience of the physical world. This is the halfway point, and it is going to be corrected. It's going to rise back up through this system of worlds, back into this state of adhesion with the Creator, but it can't do it all at once. So purposely, it was broken into 600,000 parts. Each one of these parts was likewise broken down into 613 desires. That is, each individual desire within Adam Harishon consists of 613 desires that can be corrected. The parts are small enough. It's like dividing a huge treasure and giving a coin to each person, knowing that each one will return this quality of bestowal, this point in the heart that's placed inside of it can be trusted to bring that point back to its origin and put the treasure back together as a collective once again. So in the point in the heart of the individual who begins to feel this desire for spirituality, this coin from the treasury of the king, plus the 612 other desires that exist in the heart must be transformed bit by bit to resemble to a greater degree the quality of the Creator, to reverse this process. Now the thing is, this process of the return, of the correction, of the tikkun, of the transformation, of the fulfillment of the thought of creation, it's going to happen. And all of us, all 600,000 pieces of the collective soul are going to rejoin and are going to ascend from physical selfish perceptions and a world of suffering back into a complete whole interrelationship with each other in such a way that we reach the goal of creation, which is adhesion to the creator and the complete filling and of, of the greatest unbounded desire. It's going to happen. But the question is, will it happen consciously with our agreement or will we be pushed to it? You see, there's one goal and the goal is assured, but there are two paths to the goal. One path is called the path of pain and the other path is called the path of Torah and mitzvot. Now, the path of pain 
is the path that we're all already on. It's not even really a path. It's what we see as the slow, grinding evolution of humanity that we call history. It is a kind of clinging uh, to our physical way of perceiving, to our uh, to the characteristic that we really need to transform. And as a result of this non-conscious involvement with the process of development, we find ourselves being pushed by events. We see catastrophes, we see tsunamis, we see wars, we have personal experiences in our lives, experiences of pain, experiences of suffering that are caused only by the, the lack of conscious involvement with the process of the development of desires and their correction. Now this path can go on and on and on and it's disastrous. Once the point in the heart appears in a person though, it becomes a conscious involvement. And this is the path of Torah and mitzvot. Torah means instruction by the light. And mitzvot means a transformation of a quality of one of the 613 desires from its egoistic expression to its altruistic expression. Every event that happens in our lives is really a, a mitzvah, a possibility for transformation being presented to us. Now when I say the word mitzvah, I don't mean like the physical commandments where you are instructed to do a certain thing that are and there's a list of all these things in the Shulchan Arach and the table of the Jewish law and so on do this physical thing now I'm not saying don't do the physical thing but what I mean is that this is an inner correction it's a correction of desire so whether you do the external good deed uh, you know whether it's a religious good deed or whether it's something that we consider to be something nice for somebody else you can do any external deed and you can be filled with hatred and selfishness. You can't measure anything by that. Talking about one of these 613 desires that's presented to us as an event in our life. Our entire lives are planned in such a way by this process of development to present us with the opportunity to take what we first feel as a desire to receive for myself in a given situation and transform that into its altruistic form to try to understand what the thought of the Creator is, the thought behind giving me that situation. Because, as you remember, the only way that we progress uh, along a spiritual space is by altering a quality within me to resemble that quality in spirituality that I want to enter. So, what it is that I want to know according to this new desire, this uh, desire straight for the Creator, is I want to know the Creator. I want to have a direct sensation. I want to feel in my desires, in the tangible things that occur in my life, what is the thought of the one, of the upper one, of that upper level that gave me this perfectly structured situation, that gave me this opportunity, like a, a birthday present, for me to take it first in its corrupted form and by analyzing this and seeing what it is, feeling what his thought is behind it. That's a mitzvah. That's tikkun. That's transformation. These 125 states by which we descended from our connection to the complete reality down into our separated status uh, as individual people and desires, these 125 steps are also completely encompassed by these 613 mitzvot. So that the correction of, of these, um, these transformations will bring the individual all the way back up the ladder. Another feature of this is that each and every level of descent is imprinted in us as a gene. Every point by which a greater and greater degree of uh, the will to receive was added is remembered by us like breadcrumbs on a path. And this being the first spiritual gene, this point in the heart, our 
access to assent is actually the entry point on a chain of spiritual genetics called Reshimon, remembrances. And all of the events that happen in our lives that bridge us between these 613 transformations of the will to receive to the will to bestow that bond us to the Creator, each event is laid out for us in a perfect pattern so that we have the opportunity to recognize what it is that we need to do. Now, this action of, of correction and transformation, this tikkun, is not done by us. It's done as a result of a desire that we have to make this contact with spiritual light. And as a result of the desire that we have, the work is done by the light. It's an action done on us by surrounding light. The Zohar says, when a person comes to purify themselves, they're help from above. In other words, it's as a result of a gut level need that used to be a need for those four corporal desires being transformed into a greater and greater need to know what the quality of bestowal actually is. We can't reach this ourselves. This work is called the work of God, not because we go out there like a bunch of nice soldiers and do the job that uh, God assigned us. It's because the work itself of transformation, purification, tikkun, is done on us by the light as a result of an expanding desire. But don't be confused by the word light. Don't think of it as a physical thing. Remember that the quality of the spiritual world is a quality of attributes. It's a quality of intention, feeling states. And if you want to feel the contrast between your intention and the intention of the light, then you can't simply have a desire and have it filled directly by some kind of pleasure, the way that we do that in the physical world. In order to feel the difference between our state and the state of the light, the my intention and the intention of the light, it's necessary to have a sensor, something that can feel the light. And this sensor must be an intention. It's called a screen. This is what we refer to in our last show as the additional sense, the sixth sense. Now, this screen acts as a resonator, a contrast point between the desire that sends this which is given by the light. And rather than having it just go directly in, it hits this screen and it causes a sensation a sensation of difference between the intention here and the intention here. And this screen, or masach, this is the tool. This is the way in which we can turn the will to receive, which is our matter, and the only tool that we have to work with, into something very different. We can begin to feel and receive the light only according to an intention that matches the intention of the spiritual world. Now, we'll deal with this more later. But what happens when this can actually occur, when the feeling in here and the, the intention in the screen is the same as the intention in the light, this is called a corrected desire. And this contrast creates a need in us the right need, a particular need. It builds a lack in a particular direction. It makes us want to feel what we don't have. And that is the sensation of the light, the thought, the intention behind the light. And it moves us in the intended direction of greater and greater correction. Every time that a desire moves in transformation from its 
corrupted form into its perfected form, a transformation from its will to receive to the will to bestow. This puts us in touch with eternity. It, it connects us more and more to the thought behind the entire process. And not only does it do that for this one particular desire and for one individual, but as a result of the connection, and the interconnection in Adam HaRishon, that part of person number one, that desire within person number one, like a hologram, becomes corrected in each one of the other desires and reconnects them to each other. So it raises not only the person who does the correction, but their entire world. So that our perception of our reality, the reason that things happen, the thought behind it, whether or not good and bad things are occurring, this changes. A person can feel the total goodness behind the guidance of the entire system and is no longer fooled by physical ideas of what's good and evil. This perception of the love behind the process is really what enlightenment is. Now we see good and bad events surrounding us, things that we want to happen and things that we feel should not happen. And this sense that we do something right or we do something wrong, that we make a certain act and we're punished for it, that there is a good force and a bad force in reality, this is not reality. This is the way that it appears to the will to receive. And enlightenment means that we can see, despite anything, that appears to us what the real unifying thought is behind that. Join us next time when we look at the force of development, the reason for suffering, and how we can rise above that.